and gentlemen, and please, would you bring your attention to me for a feast for your eyes to see, a cacophony of catastrophe. Like nothing you've seen before, watch closely as I open this door. Your jaws will be on the floor. After this, I'll be begging for more. AKA, let's do another video that is just as fun as the circus. So, here we go. You know who it is. It's me. It's Major Cunningham. Alrighty. Today we're going to be talking about launch windows. Launch windows. Ah, so this is when I think of the most misunderstood things in uh, popular culture. When people hear about, you know, upcoming launches at Vandenberg or the Cape. Uh, and you'll hear stuff like, wow, well, they, you know, they missed the launch window. Or the launch window closed too soon for them to be able to launch. And um, so I think there's a little bit of, well, I think there's a lot, but... Even if you're not a huge Astro fan, there's a great deal of value in this. So you can kind of debunk people's understanding of, you know, uh, when news about launches comes up and why you might have a weather cancel for a launch and uh, the very specific time window that you have. Anyway, the intent is to kind of walk you through the basics of that. So let's let's go ahead and do that today. What I'm doing specifically is we have this great exercise that somebody developed uh, to kind of walk you through all the painful particulars, all the exact you know, specific things about launch windows. Um, a GR might not look quite this nice and organized. And what I mean by that is uh, this wonderful sheet takes you through what all the elements of finding a launch window are, but uh, you might not be given steps one through nine. You might just be given uh, question number eight and you need to do steps one through seven. Good thing is, as always, the equation sheet pretty much walks you through it from beginning to end. So, First things first, calculators need to be in degrees mode. Doot, doot, mine is in degrees mode, so that's good. Okay, we'll get rid of that. Okay, all right, so let's take a look at this. So this great exercise here, it gives us some initial orbit information that we'd like to launch into. Remember, we're not actually orbiting yet, but it says we're using one of SpaceX's favorite Falcon 9 rockets. Very famous, right? And uh, we're launching from Cape Canaveral, which is... Uh, another name for the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, and we're allowed to launch basically east-ish, east-north-ish or east-south-ish <laughs> uh, between 35 and 120 degrees. So, and then here's the desired orbital elements that we want to launch into. Alrighty, so first things first, it asks how many launch opportunities exist at this site uh, and why. So, okay. What we do is we look at our inclination that we want to launch into. So that's 50 degrees. And then L sub naught, not, you know, zero, right? So L sub naught is the latitude of the launch site. And they don't literally label it like that, but they say that the lat long of the launch site, lat long, right, latitude and longitude of the launch site, is 28.5 degrees north at 80 degrees west. So this value is L sub naught. It says that's 28.5 degrees north. Okay, if my eye, my inclination I want to launch into is higher up, is bigger than my launch site latitude, I have two chances to launch. I can hit the ascending node or the descending node. If my inclination is right exactly, at, oops, right exactly at my launch site latitude, oops, equal, equal is what I mean, equal to my launch site latitude, I have one chance to launch. It's where the orbit literally just passes right over my launch site. Now, if my inclination of my desired orbit is actually lower than where I'm launching from, I have no chances to launch in directly into that orbit. I'll have to do some kind of a burn when I get to orbit. Some kind of a, oh, I don't know, a simple plane change, maybe. <laughs> Good thing you guys know about simple plane changes, but I'm not going to do that in this problem. Not going to do it. Alrighty, so number two says, what is the launch, oh, sorry, for number one, <laughs> inclination is bigger than else of not, so, sorry, I meant to circle that. Yep, so we have two chances. All right, number two, what's the launch, or the inclination auxiliary angle? Okay, all these angles that we're about to go through have names that consist of between like three and four words. It's not so important, my opinion, Cunningham's opinion, that you know or could redraw on a diagram exactly which these angles are or label them with what their long names are. Uh, one through five on here 
are a kind of just a means to an end. I don't mean to minimize them. They're actually all very important when you're actually launching something. But for our purposes, they're the math that gives us what we really want to know. And what we really want to know is how long from right now when I hack my watch and say, okay, right now it's a certain time. When can I launch directly into this orbit? Like how long do I have to wait until I push the big red button that launches this spacecraft? Um, and of course, as we said, depending on our you know inclination and our launch site latitude, we may have one chance, two chances, no chances. But if we have a chance, right, between one and two chances, then uh, we need to know how long we have to wait. And that's that's what people talk about when they're talking about, oh, you know, we've got a launch window of you know this much time, and it's we can only launch directly in that window. And so this is this is what we're calculating. So okay, the inclination auxiliary angle is this angle here from the equator to this line coming up to where your launch site is. Um, that's what this little yellow star is supposed to be, is your launch site. So um, this angle here is, is alpha. Alpha is actually equivalent to, is the same angle as, the same number as your inclination that you want to launch into. So in this case, oh, this is easy points right here. Inclination auxiliary angle alpha is 50 degrees. Boom, done. Number three, what is the launch direction auxiliary angle? Okay, so in, in our little diagram here, and thankfully this diagram is replicated on your equation sheet, but in this diagram, and, and always, uh, gamma is measured from the longitude line, you know, that comes down from the North Pole and goes right through your launch site around to the line that we drew when we were measuring alpha. So that's what gamma is. Gamma is going to require us to do a little math where our equation sheet walks us through it, and that's good. So the sine of gamma is the cosine of alpha, which we just found, over cosine of launch site latitude, which we found from above. So alpha is the inverse sine of the cosine of 50, which we just found, or rather, yeah, the angle we just found, over cosine of 28.5 degrees. Let's see here. Make sure your calculator is in degrees mode. Degrees mode. Cannot emphasize it enough. Divided by cosine. Oh, Inverse sine of the answer. Good. I get 47 degrees pretty much right on the money for gamma. Okay. Now, launch window location angle. Okay. So that's the, the third angle that completes kind of this spherical triangle here, if you will. Um, that is a right angle, but this right here is measured from the point where this line coming up intersects the equator all the way around to where the longitude line that comes down and intersects your launch site then comes down and hits the equator. So again, the the little triangle chunk here of the, of the earth that we're dealing with can be tough to visualize, but the math, it's really straightforward that the equation sheet walks us through. So let's find the cosine of our launch window location angle, and that is, according to the equation sheet, the cosine of gamma, which we just found, over the sine of alpha, which we just found. So let's plug and chug as we do. <laughs> Inverse. Oops. Cosine inverse of cosine of 47 degrees, which we just found, over sine of 50. All right, let's see what that gives us. I get 27.10 degrees out of that. Alrighty. Okay, the last kind of housekeeping piece of math that we're going to do is this uh, finding out the launch azimuth or beta for the ascending node and the descending node. Now this angle right here is beta and it's measured kind of well, let's see, how how's the best put the, well, this symbol is kind of covering it up. But it is essentially uh, the, I'll put it this way, whatever you find gamma to be because of the triangle math, the ascending node opportunity is going to be the same angle. But let's, 
let's prove that. So launch azimuth of the ascending node, the equation sheet tells us is literally the same as gamma. Okay, we we proved that. Those are equivalent angles. And of course, we found mathematically that that's 47 degrees. That's for the ascending node. Descending node is pretty straightforward too. Of course, we know that's 180 degrees away always from the ascending node opportunity. And the equation sheet helps us with that. And that gives us 133 degrees. Okay, so those are our launch azimuths. Now, number six. Number six, seven, and eight start to get to the heart of what we actually want to know out of this whole painful process. What's the launch window sidereal time? Okay, so if I measured from, from i-hat, good old i-hat, never goes away, right? Always happily pointing out there at the first point of Aries on the vernal equinox, right? That direction, quote-unquote, anchored in space, as we know, mostly anchored in space. For our purposes, 100% anchored in space. And then I measured around the equator from kind of a top view of the earth, essentially, with each, you know, marking off, dividing it up into basically 24 hours a day. Remember back to your ground tracks lesson that the earth uh, rotates 15 degrees per hour, which makes up for 360 degrees in a day over the course of a 24 hour day. Whew. Okay. Basically what we're trying to get at here overall is what is the local time at the point where the orbit intersects the earth let me say that again so lwst for the ascending node for example is basically what's the local time at the location on the earth where your orbital plane comes up and from the ascending node opportunity intersects the equator cool because we're going to use that and we're going to subtract what our current local time is at the launch site and the difference between those two is how long we have to wait all right, so let's actually march through the math here. So LWST of the ascending node, launch window, sidereal time, LWST, ascending node. Our equation sheet, again, helps us out. It's RAN plus the, uh, the launch window location angle that we found. And we see that RAN is given to us as 30 degrees up here. That's good. We found our launch window location angle was... 27.103 degrees, and that equals, obviously, 57.103. Did it in my head. No big deal. Now, the next step here is we're going to multiply 57.103 times... Oop, as I, of course, flip it. The, the old one-hour rotation of 15 degrees so 15 degrees per hour again remember that from ground tracks and this is going to give you a value so let's see here 57.103 divided by 15 hmm. so that gives us 3.80 i'm just going to say 807 hours well, that seems odd, right? Because, well, if I look down at my watch and it says it is now 0, 0300 in the morning plus 0. 0.807 hours, no one's watch looks like that, right? So the local time is actually 0, 0.3, we know that part, plus however, however much 0. 0.807 of an hour is. So let's see, 0. 0.807 times... 60 minutes in one hour to make it look human readable. Let's see, we'll multiply that by 60. Okay, and I get that's, so 0, 03 is still true. I'm kind of adding times here, right? So like on your digital watch, the 0, 03 part is the number of hours, and the minutes we're going to derive from that 0 0.807. So I, I get that that is 48 and some change. So I get that it's 0348 local at the launch site, or sorry, at the, oh, not, not the launch site, at the place on the earth 
where the orbital plane happens to intersect the equator, right? Great. So it's 0, 0348 local uh, early in the morning at that place. Now, that's the ascending node where the orbit intersects the equator over the ascending node. Great. What about the descending node opportunity? Because we have two. We have two opportunities. The problem tells us that. Good thing for us, the equation sheet says LWST descending node opportunity is ran plus 180 degrees minus that launch window location angle. Okay, so let's again crank through the math. 30 plus 180 minus 27.103. That gives us... Uh, 182.87. Okay, first things first, 182.87. Let's convert that to a time instead of a degrees. As before, we're going to multiply by one hour for 15 degrees. So that gives us 12. Point one nine one hours but now let's convert that to your human readable you know time on your watch your digital clock so that's 12 hours right those are the, that's the amount of hours plus 0 0.191 fractions of an hour which is to say 16 minutes per one hour we'll multiply that by And this is going to be 12. I got 12 hours, 11 minutes, plus a few seconds, but we don't go into that detail in Astro. So 1211 local is the descending node opportunity. So put another way, again, the place on the Earth around the equator, right, where the orbital plane at the descending node intersects the equator, that place, so who knows, that'll be somewhere in the tropics or somewhere, you know, in uh, the Pacific or somewhere, it doesn't matter. The place basically on the Earth around the equator where overhead the descending node crosses is 1211, almost a almost little, little past noon, a little past lunchtime, right, a little past noon, local time for them. So... You don't have to put the L. That's a force of habit for me. I always put an L to indicate local time, but uh, that's local time for those locations. So maybe I should just get rid of the L to make things less complicated because that's my goal, trying to make things less, not more complicated. <laughs> okay. All right, now number eight. Ah, the crux of the matter, finally. If the current LWST at the launch site is 1,200, Okay, so now we're talking about LST. LST is like the true local time, if you want to call it that, at the actual launch site. So what the problem is saying is that at Kennedy Space Center right now, it's noon. It's like, just assume that you're sitting there in Florida on the coast at Kennedy Space Center, and it's noon. So in this case, they tell us it's, it's 1,200. You're just about to eat your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Okay. So the question is then, if that's true, how long do you have to wait for the launch window to open? Ah, tricky. Which opportunity comes first? Ah, well, I'll tell you what. Let's go ascending node, descending node like we did before. All right. So wait time. Now, this equation is not on your equation sheet because it's not really, I don't know, I mean, it's not really even an equation. Like, if I tell you that you have to go to an event at 7 p.m., and right now it's, you know, 3.30 in the afternoon, or let's use military time, if your event's at 1900 and the current time is 1530, would you believe that you, you know, I was like, okay, how much time do you have to get ready? Well, I don't know. You don't have to look at an equation sheet for that. You just know. It's just something from daily life. Right, you have three and a half hours to get ready or do your homework and then get ready or whatever. You give yourself these kinds of time estimates on the daily. Everybody does. It's just part of living. Same thing here. So right now, if I say at the launch site, it's 1200 
right? It's noon. And then at the launch site ascending node opportunity, as we found, it's, you know, zero three in the morning, almost four early in the morning. That is how I would write that. Now, I'm actually going to implement it a little bit differently than that. Let me put it to you this way. Here is how I typically do this, you know, looking back at my notes. I measure from the current time to, uh, well, from the current time at the launch site, basically, to the time when uh, the time at the place on the Earth where the orbit intersects the equator, right? Okay. The equatorial plane, I should say. Here's how I do this. So we found out that launch window sidereal time was 0, 3.48. And our local sidereal time at the launch site is 1,200. So what that means is right now it's 1,200 at the launch site. And the time at the actual place where the orbit intersects over the equatorial plane it's zero three in the morning. Okay, just wanted to make sure the facts are clear. I keep repeating them because they are important. So twelve hundred to midnight. That's twelve hours. That that doesn't quite get us to zero three in the morning. So we still have to add zero zero hundred, right? Which is the same as twenty four hundred, if you want to call it that. to 0348, let me get rid of that little plus sign. That means that we had to go 12 hours to wait from noon until midnight, plus the additional three hours and 48 minutes. So that gives us the wait time for the ascending node opportunity is 15 hours 48 minutes. Thankfully, the descending node, which I'm, I'm going to tell you is the same, oops, same equation, essentially. The descending node is LWST. Descending node minus LST. Same as above, right? But thankfully, the descending node opportunity is actually in the near future, right, so 12.11 minus our current time at the launch site, which is noon. Yeah, so the wait time for the descending node opportunity is 11 minutes. Whoo, hope we're ready to launch because it's the descending node that's clearly coming up first, right? I have to wait 15 hours, almost 16 hours for my ascending node opportunity. I only have to wait 11 minutes for my descending node opportunity. Now, okay, last things last. Number nine says, are there any limitations to which opportunity you choose? And obviously the answer is going to be yes. Um, you could make that argument even if you'd never been an Astro before. It's like there's always going to be locations and considerations. But what it's getting at is the customer wants to launch in a particular orbit. So did they place any constraints on you um, as far as where you're allowed to launch? And what I mean by that is, remember our launch azimuths. <clears throat> the customer, well, the government more, I guess, said the allowable launch azimuths are between 35 degrees and 120 degrees. Okay, what we found that our launch azimuth for the ascending node opportunity is 47 degrees. Well, that's good. Because 47 degrees is between 35 and 120. The descending node launch azimuth is 133. Can't use it. Why? Well, because 133 is bigger than the max, right? Um, what's a better way to write this? Because the ace or the descending node rather opportunity is bigger than 120, which is the max can't use our descending node opportunity. So there are limitations. Um, here's how I'd write it. I'd say yes. Due to 
launch site restrictions, we may, we're allowed, we may only use the ascending node launch azimuth. So that means we have to use the ascending node wait time. So despite the wonderful fact that we'd be able to launch, if we were allowed to launch, like physically it's possible for us to launch beyond 130 degrees launch azimuth, but we risk hitting our own people. We don't want to do that. So we just define launch corridors, what they're called, between, you know, for each launch site. So the launch corridor for Kennedy Space Center, or at least as much as the problem tells us, is between 35 and 120 degrees. So we are just going to have to, to make sure we don't have rocket bodies and toxic stuff falling on people. We're going to go ahead and have to wait for that ascending node opportunity. Oh, well. But at least we have a launch opportunity, right? So, okay. So hopefully that helps just walk you through. Um, uh, to give you a quick, kind of a quick example, let's see here. Let me show you what it would probably look like closer on a GR or a, a homework that doesn't have as many intermediate steps helping you. I recommend, I really recommend trying this problem on your own. I'll leave that on the screen there for a second. But you can see there's only a couple steps. They expect you to do all the steps yourself and just provide the final answers. Thankfully, the equation sheet essentially walks you through the whole thing with the exception of the wait time. Remember, that's not really an equation that's an equation at all. It's just, I just got out of class. It's 3.30 right now. I have an event 7 p.m. in the evening. How much time do I have to get ready? Well, it's that event's time, 7 p.m. minus the current time. So that's how you do that. Uh, this was fun to chat with you about launch windows. We'll see you next time.